All right, let me share my screen. So we have this Jira HDDS 2731 for this certification revocation support for Ozone. This is a feature that we are planning to uh, get in the next release of Ozone. So we have recently updated the design doc uh, for version two to support the SCM HA merge and also delayed um, revocation support for certificate revocation. So let's take a quick look. Uh, to give a brief context on what we are trying to solve here, today Ozone doesn't support uh, rotating certificates or keys in uh, the Ozone security system. So if there is uh, a security compromise on one of the data nodes and the admins want to uh, revoke the certificates, there is uh, no way today rather than you know, manually going to the data node and deleting uh, the certificates in uh, data nodes cache. So we try to resolve that by uh, having a certificate revocation list, which is a standard uh, CRL to revoke certificates in the Ozone uh, system. So instead of going to all the data nodes manually, we'll have a system where the admins can issue a command to revoke certificates across the system. And uh, once we achieve this, uh, the admins will also be able to uh, schedule something for periodic search rotation or uh, key rotation in Ozone. Uh, let's take a quick look at the design. So the certificate rotation has to be handled in different ways across data nodes and the Ozone managers. So let's see how uh, it's handled in uh, data nodes. So we already have this uh, heartbeat mechanism between the data node and SEM. So it is a bit easier to achieve this search rotation in uh, data nodes. So we also have a detailed sequence diagram on um, you know, what happens in sequence. So let's say that uh, an admin comes to uh, CLI and uh, tries to issue a revoke certificate command for, so it can also be done in uh, a bunch of certificates can be revoked in one shot. So the admin can uh, specify uh, cert IDs or the data node host name. So we can provide multiple options for the admins to uh, specify certs to revoke. And uh, this command will go to SEM leader in case of uh, SEM HA. And uh, the SEM leader will take care of uh, this revoke certificates by persisting it into uh, RocksDB. So the leader will also create a, a CRL sequence ID and create a CRL, which is the certificate revocation list. So it's nothing but a list where uh, multiple certificates will be stored and uh, it will also contain the revocation time. So at the time of revoking certificates, the admin can uh, specify a later time or a current time, which is you know instant revocation when there is a compromise. And uh, we are trying to support both. So we'll take that time and uh, the SCM leader will create a CRL and it will have this CRL sequence ID persisted, which is nothing but a monotonically increasing ID so that the SCM can uh, you know, keep track of where each data node is at by having this monotonically increasing uh, sequence ID for the CRLs. So once a CRL is uh, created, it will persist into the RocksDB via RATIS so that all the followers also have the same information so that in the future, if the SEM leader switches, then the other SEMs will also have the same uh, set of CRL IDs and uh, the CRLs. So once it's persisted, we just return back a uh, success to the clients so that the clients get hold of this CRL ID and in the future, they can uh, check the status of this CRL ID in uh, some interface like Recon or re even uh, via CLI to check the process of uh, what's happening with the CRL ID. Because this uh, CRL has to be processed by all the data nodes in the system. And uh, the data nodes have to come back to SEM and say that I have processed this CRL ID. So that's why we immediately return a CRL ID to the client and uh, the the admins can check on that CRL ID later on, you know, how many data nodes have processed this CRL and how many are still processing and things like that. So once this new uh, CRL ID is persisted, 
So we will attach something to the existing data nodes heartbeat message, like the latest processed CRL sequence ID. And there's something called the pending revocation queue. So this pending revocation queue is the one that will have the CRLs that are to be processed in a future time. So that is uh, the, the, the data node is uh, telling SEM that I am still processing uh, these uh, CRLs because they are to be revoked in a future time. And it will also tell the latest processed CRL sequence ID so that uh, we know that the data node has this CRL sequence ID and uh, it is still processing the rest in the revocation queue. So with this information, the SCM leader will check what it has in its own DB. And if that CRL sequence ID doesn't match with the latest processed CRL sequence ID, then it will send the new CRL ID to the data node. So that the data node will know that there is a new CRL ID, which I have not processed yet. And then it will issue another command to get this new CRL. So this is where the data node processes the new CRL. So it will check if uh, the cert any of the certificate in uh, the CRL is in its own cache. If it is yes, then it will go and check for the revocation time. And if the revocation time has already expired, then it's time to revoke now. So it will go ahead and uh, delete all the certificates that are listed in the CRL in its own cache and uh, purchase this new CRL ID as its own processed CRL ID and it will go back to sending the heartbeat to uh, SEM again. But if it's not the revocation time and uh, the revocation time is somewhere in the future, then it will just persist its ID to uh, the pending revocation queue and uh, it will also persist it into RocksDB and then uh, just go back to sleep. And there will be uh, another background thread that will run uh, you know, every configurable interval and try to revoke these uh, certificates that are in the pending revocation queue because they are in the future time. So every configured interval time, the background thread will uh, check if the revocation time in any of these uh, CRLs in the revocation queue have expired and try to follow the same process by deleting the certificates in cache. So Eventually the pending revocation queue will become empty and the SEM will know that it has nothing in the revocation queue. And we can also get this information to the, uh, the end users by any interface like recon so that they will know what the data nodes are processing right now. And so, yeah, this is how it, um, we are planning to achieve search rotation in data nodes. I'll take a pause here and uh, see if you have any questions. Hey, this is Michel. Um, is it for when you have a nose and cluster with his own CA or do you plan to use the same uh, process when you have certificates issued by other systems like, for example, a vault, a vault system? Uh, hi, Michelle. So uh, is your question that only, does this work only if uh, SCM HA is enabled? Is that your question? No, my question is, um, do you have your own CA mm -hmm. for your own cluster in that situation? Or are you using certificate that can be provided by an external system and that will manage the CRL externally to the SCM? Got it. So uh, I don't think we support external CA today. So the CA that we're talking about is the SCM in the ozone system. So SCM runs a CA and uh, SCM issues these certificates to data nodes and ozone managers. And that is what we are trying to revoke here. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we don't have support for external CA yet, but uh, I think and the roadmaps, yeah. Yeah, but we, we had some conversation that it would be great to make it pluggable and use any kind of external CA. But I think even in the even in even in a case when it would be a pluggable system, if it's not obviously the certificates can be revoked manually, right? I can go to the data node, I can delete something, restart the data node and and, and so on, or but if it's 
if it's handled by the SCM, then we need this um, workflow anyway, right? I'm not very sure how can it work with the vault, but my first guess is that exactly the in exactly the same way the SCM should should retrieve the new certificates and and just uh, uh, send it to the right data node or something like this. But this okay. is not yet fully planned, or it was just on the long term roadmap, as far as I remember. That's correct, Martin. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah thanks, Mili. And how does it look like from the admin point of view? I guess there will be some CLI, and I should say that, okay, oh, I would like to revoke the certificate of the data node one, right? Or something like this. Correct, Martin. So we are planning to provide multiple options in the CLI. They can either, you know, give a bunch of uh, cert IDs. Or you can also tell, you know, revoke all the certificates of data nodes or, you know, all ozone managers, something like that. Or you can also provide uh, multiple host names of data nodes. And uh, we can internally, we can figure out the cert IDs of those data nodes and uh, add them to the CRL and process them. Okay. Yeah. So we can provide as many options to the uh, end users in the CLI, as far as we can convert them to cert IDs internally. And I guess we need some option to print out the current sequence ID assigned to all of the data nodes, right? If I execute some command, I would be interested if this sequence ID is sent out to all of the data nodes and everybody is on the same side. Correct. So yeah, that is why with the heartbeat mechanism, we know that the latest process CRL sequence ID, we know that each data node is at which sequence ID. And we can expose this information to the end users. Yeah, to the client or the recon or, or to somebody. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there, yeah, we can have another CLI where if they enter a sequence ID, we can tell if the data node has processed it or not. And we can list all the data nodes or also managers and show them what's the progress there. Yeah, so if there are no more questions on data nodes, we can move on to ozone managers. So ozone manager handling is a little bit different because there is no such established uh, heartbeat mechanism between ozone managers and SEM. So the proposal here is to uh, have something similar to heartbeat, but just for this uh, search rotation, so that ozone managers will constantly uh, be pinging uh, the SEM leader in a configurable interval to check if there is a new sequence ID uh, for the CRM. And uh, it'll, it'll then check uh, if its own process CRL ID is not equal to the new one, then it will fetch the new CRL ID and uh, start processing like the data now. Let's take a look at the sequence here. So when the admin issues the rework certificate, it's the same SEM creates a CRL sequence ID and persists it to RocksDB. And then when ozone managers send this uh, get latest CRL sequence ID. And this, uh, since also managers are also in a quorum, only the leader checks this uh, CRL status. And then the persistence happens via active so that all also manager followers are in the same state. So it first checks. So basically this is like a background thread that runs across all the also manager instances. So each also manager will check if it's the leader. And if yes, then it gets the latest CRL sequence ID and checks if that's equal to the process CRL sequence ID. And uh, if that is true, then it will just go back to sleep for a configurable interval and do this in the loop. But if it's not, then it has to get the new CRL. And uh, here is where it processes that new CRL. And it is very much similar to how data nodes process. So they will check the revocation time and also check if uh, any of the certificate that it has is listed in the CRL. So if that's the case, it will check for the time of revocation and uh, perform a delete in its own certificate cache. 
and also persist this ID in uh, the rocks DB so that when it goes down or comes back, it knows exactly where it left uh, before dying. And it can uh, go fetch the new CRLs again from the SEM leader. So it also has its own uh, pending revocation queue. If, uh, if the CRL revocation time is in the future, it will just put that CRL into the revocation queue so that it can process it in the future. And uh, we have this background thread for supporting delayed revocation that will run in both Ozone managers and data nodes to uh, you know, get all the CRLs in the pending revocation queue and uh, check if the time has expired and uh, delete the certificates in cache. So the only job is to go check the pending revocation queue and the delete certificates in cache. And then it will also delete that particular CRL entry from the revocation queue so that the future heartbeat messages will let SCM leader know that uh, there is nothing pending in the queue. So this is the proposal for uh, P2 of this uh, design spec for search rotation or key rotation. And that is what I wanted to highlight. Yeah. So if you have any questions or comments or feedback, yeah. I, I have one com comment, sorry, again. <laughs> but uh, so we had earlier some discussion about the heartbeats between the data node and the SCM, even we created a gyro issue to replace that heartbeat mechanism to with, with gRPC. Because gRPC can support bidirectional uh, streaming, which means that you don't need to, to poll. So it's not something that, okay, a new request in every 30 minutes or 30 seconds, Mm -hmm. But the SCM itself can immediately send any message to the ozone manager or data node, even if the connection is created by the data node. Because we have just two streams, right? If, if you create a gRPC connection and it's full async, you will have two streams. Mm -hmm. A one-way stream to the SCM and another way to back. Yes. And we had a discussion that it might be more effective to use this one between the data node and SCM because we don't need to wait for the next heartbeat. SCM anytime can send a closed container command, command, pipeline creation command, everything. And it will be sent back immediately with the gRPC connection. And if it's just broken, it can be, can be reopened and Correct. everything is fine. And I'm just wondering if, if this seems to be a new heartbeat and might be something where we can integrate this idea because if the SCM can send any message back to the ozone manager it also can be very effective for other uh, goals as well for example we can cache all of the data node information the ozone manager to refresh the data node information data node details and if something is changed, it can be just sent by the SCM. So I think in general, it can be an effective way to connect the ozone manager and SCM. But I'm not sure. I'm just adding it as a brainstorming idea or something which, which was Martin, discussed yeah, in the think, past. I think that's a very good suggestion, Martin. So we are leveraging the existing heartbeat mechanism for uh, data nodes and uh, SCM. So we will just add these messages to the existing heartbeat message and uh not yeah for data yeah i i totally agree for data node i wouldn't modify it but when if i understood well for the om between between om and scm we need something very similar and maybe it's a good point in the time to try out this uh other approach because all of the other parts is exactly the same right there is yeah. uh this is nothing more just the communication. If we need to pull from one server to another one, or we can have a bi-directional connection where the other, other side of the connection can send back the information anytime without yeah. polling. That's... Yeah, I think that's a very good solution. We can definitely try it out for the... At least we can I consider or... or... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is, yeah that's a very good point. I think uh, for auto manager and SCM, that's simple enough. We can open a new uh, gRPC port uh, on SCM side to allow OM, uh, OM to uh, do this kind of bi-directional streaming to implement this kind of uh, um, sequence ID check and update. 
Yeah, and we can use that in the future for any communication between SCM and OM. Yeah, I believe there are some requirements to update the pipeline information and uh, for our auto manager as well. Yes, but usually this is, uh, yeah, we can reuse, yeah. So, when uh, we update the pipeline, it's a it's, uh, request response. Yeah. We, this, we can use it, but my idea was this more like uh, caching all of the data. Not, uh, we couldn't cache all of the pipeline, or maybe. It depends how many pipelines do we have. It should be very limited, right? It's not Yeah, it should content. be very limited. So I think yeah, uh, then we then have then can, yeah. to do this kind of. Uh, like a, a directional like update of a pipeline uh, on yeah. some, uh, key info and uh, so this yeah. can potentially like benefit from this yeah, yeah i agree and, and 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 just maintain an in-memory cache of the pipelines on the om side and the scm can update it anytime when something is is changed on the scm side yeah that's yeah, that yeah, uh, 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 my only concern on this is like on the auto manager side uh, we change the certificate and uh, we have to restart the uh, uh, ready servers and uh, because uh, to make it into effective and uh, restart of auto manager and uh, uh, without like uh, some external like uh, command and like it's like an internal restart just similar to the mini ozone cluster where you like uh, refresh the certificate and restart the ready servers and this is something we have and like uh, uh, like uh, tested uh, like how to make it uh, work without any disruptions for the auto manager functionality itself. Yeah. Uh, because I think the current design uh, assume like we just update the uh, uh, certificate cache. And uh, when we update the cache and uh, there's cases where we have to um, like uh, uh, refetch the certificate itself because like uh, if this automatic instance own certificate is revoked, revoked and we shouldn't allow this instance to continue using this certificate. And in that case, uh, we will do a redo the security init and then fetch the certificate and also restart the uh, ready server with the certificate and uh, some other service that might use this certificate. Yeah, if it we... starts well. Yeah, if we would use the gRPC, then usually you, you, we use the mutual TLS with exactly the same certificates, right? Yeah, yeah. We are, I think we have some changes to uh, start a mutual TLS on auto manager. And then if you do not restart, then that means the revocation is not complete until yeah. you restart, like manually restart the auto manager. Uh, and hopefully yeah. this is not needed because if we can do an internal restart without like uh, starting from like a management side, like the cutter manager or some other, that would be great. Yeah, sure. I think it should be possible. We have all of these components. We just didn't have a good interface until now that where we have, we usually we have a start and close method for all of these services. And so I don't think that we are very far from this but we just didn't test it, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's my kind. Of, I have like a <laughs> personally test like a restart uh, without uh, like a, a stop yeah. like all the other automatic instance services. And uh, so in the document I put like uh, we will like restart uh, one instance at a time and uh, and uh, to finish the revocation of the automatic yeah. certificate instead of like revoke all the three uh, at the same time. But uh, uh, we will see. <laughs> Yeah, I think it would be an interesting challenge. It will be an interesting challenge to test it because it. Uh, I think it, it means that we need to test it multiple times, right? That what about after hundred of certificate revocations? Mm -hmm. Do we have any memory leak or something like this? So we can just revoke certificate, restart, internal restart, revoke certificate, internal restart, and see if it works. Yeah. Yeah, because if you do a code restart, usually the memory leaking issue will be hidden there. Yeah, but this sure. hard restart and uh, this can accumulate uh, like a magnified if you do that multiple times. Yeah, it's totally, yeah, it's totally true.
Do we have any other questions? I have just one question that, do you have any, okay, I would prefer, to, I suggest to upload this part of this call to the YouTube channel where I started to share this kind of uh, design doc explaining sessions. So if you have no objection, I will, I will cut out this part of this call and just share it uh, because it can be useful for the uh, other community meetings and other community members from different time zones as well. Sure, Martin. Yeah, I don't have any objections. Yeah. All right. I so think. I, yeah, I think we are running out of time. So if you have any feedback or comments, or if you want to take up some Jira's, you can always visit HDDS2731. And we have uh, all the subtasks and the design dog attached to this Jira. Thanks, Vivek. Yeah, yeah, I think we are, uh, yeah, we are top of an hour. All right, thanks everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Thanks everyone. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.